Hello, I'm Joyce Landry, and this is the Future of Cruising Sustainable Ship Series. This is number seven, and today we're going to be focusing on shore excursions and the sustainability of shore excursions, specifically having tour operators be certified to offer sustainable excursions. And we want to talk to two experts in this area, actually two people on the forefront of sustainable shore excursions. We're very pleased to have them both on our program today. And we know we have a very, very interesting talk ahead of us. So our first guest today is Roberta Jacoby. Roberta was hailed in Sea Trade Magazine in June of this year for advancing sustainable tours and making memories for millions of cruisers as she was head of Royal Caribbean Cruises Global Tour Operations Division. Roberta developed, negotiated, and implemented over 7,000 tour excursions across the three global brands, Royal Caribbean, Celebrity Cruise Line, and Azamara, working with over 500 tour operators on every continent. Roberta led RCD's sustainable tour program, and she's here today to tell us how she did that and why. Roberta currently provides high-level advisory services to the travel and hospitality industry through her company, Jacoby Advisors. I'd like to welcome Roberta Jacoby. Hey, Roberta. Hi, Joyce. How are you? Thank you Good. so much for having me. Oh, well, thank you for being here. I think we're, we're all here in, uh, in South Florida, just wringing out the wet from the uh, so-called tropical storm and, and almost hurricane that we had over the last few yeah, days. Absolutely. I thought we were over hurricane season, but I guess not. Uh, I know. So we're um, so we're now talking about um, things that we love, you know, which is the cruise industry and yes. particularly, <laughs> particularly the the tour side of it. And you know, Roberta, when we first talked, you were very enthusiastic about sustainability in general. Is this a, a personal interest of yours as well as a business interest? Well, I'll tell you honestly. Um, probably before I really got into this, I did what other people did. I picked up. Uh, uh, garbage if I saw it laying around, I recycled. So I did the typical thing, but I wouldn't say that it was really so much a part of me, but after learning so much about it by going through this process, which we'll talk about in a minute, it, it really becomes a part of your DNA and, and everything that you think about and, and, uh, and do. So uh, yeah, it, 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 it's actually changed my life, my personal life, as well as uh, learning from the business aspect. Well, you certainly have been out in front and we, I know about that and soon our viewers will know about this as well. Um, you've made a difference in the adoption of sustainability in tour operators, those that have been with Royal Caribbean for a long time. You did this while you were with Royal Caribbean. So we're going to load some visuals right now and we'd love it if you would just walk us through and tell us a little bit about how this came about and, um, and, and where did you take it? Sure. So a lot of the slides that uh, you're going to see today, I actually used um, with many of the tour operators. So if there are any tour operators uh, on this presentation, they'll see it. But obviously, I love to start with a beautiful picture like this, um, showing the ocean so clean and pristine. And if we could just go to the next slide. So uh, in 2019, there were 30 million cruise gas. So uh, up from 28.5 million in 2018. And if it hadn't been for the pandemic, uh, the cruise lines were poised to have 34 million guests this year. So the cruise lines have a responsibility to protect the oceans and the destinations. Next slide. So going from that beautiful picture to this picture that may not be so beautiful, uh, this is kind of a sad state of affairs. So in 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in the sea. 71% of seabirds and 30% of turtles have been found with plastics in their stomachs. Marine animals that eat plastic have a 50% chance of dying. And between now and 2050, we will have created four times all the plastic produced in history. And half of that will end up in the oceans. Next slide. By the way, I just wanted to say that um, there's still, I think, um, uh, uh, people who don't really understand how bad of a problem this is. So I'm, I'm glad we kind of keep emphasizing this every time we go on the air is, you know, the oceans are really not clean right now. And here right. what we're trying to do is help this. Right. Exactly. That's exactly right. 
So uh, when I got to Royal Caribbean six years ago, I was really impressed with the company's dedication to sustainability through a, an established um, program that they had called Save the Waves. And it went through every part of the company. So since my job was to create tours for the corporation, of course, you have to incorporate all of these different things that you see on the screen in order to make it attractive and appealing to, to the guests. So you want it to be unique and innovative and exclusive, great value for money, authentic, creative, great local experience, and of course, sustainable. So that was really what my job was and working with all of our third party tour operators to create this beautiful content. And of course, you see Rio right here is a great example of a wonderful place to do all of that. So the next slide. So then there was a huge game changer. In 2016, Royal Caribbean entered into the partnership with World Wildlife Fund. And World Wildlife Fund, I think most of you know, is the world's leading conservation organization. So obviously this was a really, really big deal for us. And we had three different streams uh, where we were going to create goals for ourselves to make sure that we were living up to the responsibility of being a partner with World Wildlife Fund. Colleagues of mine at Royal were working on reducing the carbon footprint. Other colleagues were uh, working on sustainable purchasing for products, and I was responsible for getting a thousand of our tours GSTC certified by the year 2020. Um, Roberta, tell us a little bit about, um, it was um, Richard Fain, the chairman's um, uh, uh, goal, wasn't it? The, the World Wildlife Fund and that relationship, did he drive this? He totally did. Uh, he was so passionate about this. And this did not happen overnight. This was a long, long process. World Wildlife Fund does not have very many partners, particularly uh, major business corporations. Uh, they have a partnership with Coca-Cola. Uh, they have a partnership with us and a few others. But honestly, they are extremely selective. And they're looking to do partnerships with companies that they feel get it and that they feel can really move the needle uh, to make sure uh, towards their goals too. And so it took a long time for it to happen, but if you want any kind of change to happen, it has to be from the top down. And Richard is probably the biggest cheerleader for this and, and really got everybody energized and motivated around, around this. It, it was a really, really cool thing. So is it fair to say that the World Wildlife Fund's relationship is what spurred the uh, forward thinking into sustainable tours? For sure, because we'll go to the next slide. So I'll explain this. Uh, when World Wildlife Fund first came in, we had some sustainability, but we really didn't know about GSTC. So when they brought that to us and said GSTC is the gold standard of of sustainable tourism, we didn't really know what that was. We didn't really understand it. And we had to get with the program pretty quickly to, to understand what it was that GSTC was, why it was so important, and then what we could do to proceed to, to get to our goal, because you never want to miss a goal at Royal Caribbean. I mean, we're, we're all really there. So we had to, we had to really educate ourselves. And my team and I went up to Washington, DC. We met with people from WWF and GSTC in order to really sit down and understand how it could all work. And uh, GSTC is, uh, is the gold standard and it was established under the United Nations to define sustainable tourism. So they set the standards, but um, they have accredited bodies to certify GSTC. So once we kind of understood all of that, then we were kind of on our way. So go to the next slide. And once as we're doing that, um, I also understand that you went out to the tour operators and got helped them to certify, but not just for your own sake. I mean, really, once they were certified, they could offer this to other cruise lines. So you really were helping out your other cruise line compatriots as well uh, to get the entire industry certified in a sense. Oh, right. Thank you, Joyce, for pointing that because I think it's really important to note here that that cruise lines are very competitive in a lot of ways. When it comes to sustainability, we are not competitive. I didn't feel competitive at all with this. 
I wanted to tell everybody what we were doing, the more the merrier. So if a tour operator does become GSTC because I'm helping them and incentivizing them and, and educating them why it's important for them to do it, if they have that GSTC certification and they work with another cruise line or another tour company, they have that GSTC certification for everybody. So it's not a competitive issue at all. And I was always happy to talk about this. And that's why I did so many public types of, of discussions about it to try to get my colleagues at other cruise lines and, and tour operators to, to join the party, so to speak. Yeah, and this was a real project, wasn't it? I mean, you traveled Huge. all over to do this. Yes, yes, definitely. So, so GSTC is, um, they, they set the standards, but they don't set the accreditation. So there are certifying bodies and there are several of them and, and I've listed uh, many of them here. And it became very confusing uh, trying to funnel this into a good uh, process for our tour operators. So Royal Caribbean decided to partner with one of them. And we partnered with Travel Life, but honestly, you could partner with anybody. And if a tour operator wanted to use Earth Check or Control Union, that was totally fine. We were just trying to make it easy and we partnered with Travel Life to uh, have a streamlined uh, conversation. So um, next slide. So what is the process? So in very simple terms, so you select a GSTC accredited certification body like a travel life. You submit an application, a self-assessment form and documentary evidence. You do a desktop assessment and consultation. You have an on-site audit and then there's the award of the certificate. So I know that sounds simple, five easy steps and it's done, but in order for a tour operator to become GSTC certified, there is a 10 page single based uh, checklist of everything that the tour operators have to do. And it includes social and economic and environmental and cultural. And uh, it, it's, it's a very complicated process. Uh, and when Mario comes on later, I, I'm sure he'll, he'll tell you a little bit more about it. Yeah, and let's be clear, this is an investment. I mean, uh, Royal Caribbean made an investment having you head this up and the tour operators made an investment to be certified. Because Absolutely. I did it easily. It, it, yes, it was not easy. That's that's true. And I will say at the beginning, when I first started talking about it with the tour operators, they kind of were scratching their heads. But um, but I don't give up. And little by little by little, uh, we, we definitely were able to keep the communication going. So the next slide, please. So some examples of how a tour operator can get on the path to become GSTC certified. They assign a sustainability coordinator at their company who oversees the goals for reducing impacts like energy, wastewater, and then they have to set up systems to measure it. Uh, a, human, uh, a written human resources policy, including healthy and safe work uh, conditions, professional development opportunities for the staff, purchasing policies, favoring sustainable suppliers and products whenever possible, and programs for the company to support initiatives benefiting the local community, which is doing business. Next slide. <clears throat> so my team and I came up with ways in order to educate, help, and incentivize the tour operators who want to become GSTC certified. Well, first of all, as I mentioned, we have the partnership with WWF and GSTC. We partnered with the GSTC accredited certified body, Travel Life, as we mentioned. Um, and we did presentations. I did presentations. It's every C trade, every FCCA. I went to CLIA Summit at C and I did presentations much like the one that you're seeing here. I did those presentations. And in fact, at C trade and FCCA, we invited people from Travel Life and uh, GSTC to come and meet with the tour operators one by one, which really helped the education process. And just partnering with WWF, I mean, they are so, the, their team is incredibly knowledgeable. Uh, they're just really uh, sharp and they were able to really help us define what it was that we were looking for, uh, along with our internal Royal Caribbean team that's responsible for the WWF relationship, also a fantastic group. That, so that we could hone in our message and make sure that we had a, the message that everybody wanted. And then we had incentives for tour operators to achieve GSTC certification 
for example, like an extension of a contract, which was hugely welcomed by the tour operators. Uh, we did webinars for tour operators. So we had two or 300 people on at a time for these webinars. And then we had a special promotion of tours designated as sustainable. So it, it's a, it's a, uh, a symbol that will be on the website to show if a tour operator has GSTC tours, their tour will have a notation of this uh, GSTC notification. So, so Roberta, you mentioned the incentives. Um, so I, I would imagine that you then would favor those tour operators who were certified over ones who were not. So that was the, the, the game plan. So we had a, a long-term goals and short-term goals. So as time goes on and as more and more tour operators are GSTC certified, yes. And it becomes a piece of the puzzle when we're when we're deciding who we want to be our tour operator for sure. And as 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 this critical mass grows, the tour operators that are not GSTC certified are going to be left out in the cold. So it really is a process of of getting momentum and getting enough tour operators to that point. And then we're certainly looking at the tour operators that are GSTC certified in a very favorable way. Mm -hmm. um, next slide. So um, I mentioned before that Royal Caribbean uh, had a goal of having a thousand tours certified by 2020. And I'm really, really proud to say that as of May of 2020, seven months before the target date, 2,000 tours had achieved GSTC certification with many, many more in the pipeline. In fact, kind of a funny story, ID Tours, who's in New Zealand, uh, they were just about ready to become GSTC certified when the lockdown happened with uh, the coronavirus. And they were so disappointed. And we were able through with Travel Life and GSTC to get them an, an audit, a virtual audit in New Zealand. And they became GSTC certified through this virtual audit. So uh, that was probably the last one that happened. And uh, I truly believe that as the pandemic is in our rearview mirror and hope that happens very soon, that sustainability will again become the forefront and this will pick up the momentum uh, again. I I'm also on the board of uh, Tourism Cares, a, a fantastic nonprofit uh, organization, and they're basically really looking at helping communities and and protecting destination stewardship. It's it's a wide range of uh, great travel executives from all over uh, the world. And um, if you don't know about Tourism Cares, it's, it would be a great, uh, great organization to look into if you're interested in uh, promoting sustainability even further. So oh, way, congratulations on this goal. I mean, to go from a thousand to two thousand, uh, that's pretty impressive. So so really, I, I think what I mentioned before, I think having Richard's enthusiasm and therefore he would talk about it with the board and the executives. And, and it was just a, a great um, uh, experience of momentum and making sure everybody understood the importance of it. And that's why I think that it's it's going to go on. And and I got excited about it. My team got excited about it. And we got the tour operators excited about it. So it, it just was was a great process. I, and just just to to end here on some accolades from tour operators. La Buemes from Uruguay was our very, very first tour operator that became GSTC certified. And when we heard the good comments from them, from their experience, we knew we were on the right path. And since then, every single tour operator that has become GSTC certified has a great story to tell you that they've learned something about themselves, like you asked me at the beginning personally, or it helped their business, uh, or they just felt great about what they were doing with their local communities. And, and so it's it's really nice. And today uh, we're with uh, Mario Senecheribo. I know I just said his name wrong again. Um, uh, and he, he and his brother Jose, they uh, run BC tours in Spain. And they, they do the Royal tours, but they also do tours for many, many other cruise lines. And, and they were one of the first uh, tour operators in Europe to really take on this challenge. So it'll be great to hear from him with some of the, the comments that he had about how he became GSTC certified and the benefits for his company. 
Well, so, thank, you. thank you, Roberta. I mean, you actually just helped me with the introduction for Mario. That was very nice of you. Right. <laughs> really, this has been, um, you know, very, very informative. And, so, uh, and really, we will see you back at the end of Mario's uh, time with us for <laughs> questions and answers. I'm looking so, forward to it. We'll see you in just a, just a few moments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to point out to those that are new to this technology, if you'd like to ask a question, do not put your questions in the chat box because they won't show up on our screen. They only will show up if you put in the ask a question in the ask a question box at the bottom of your screen. So if you have something you want to ask, please do and start getting your questions ready. Uh, what, who I'd like to introduce right now is Mario Sanacaribo. I think I got that right. <laughs> Mario comes to us today from his home in Palma de Mallorca, where I understand he was born. Uh, he told me earlier today that his Italian grandfather uh, toured there in the 1920s, ended up having work there and fell in love and married a Mallorcan. And so they ended up settling there and that's where Mario was from. And he's still there today. Uh, Mario has been in the tourism business since 1988. He was managing director for BC Group from 1992 until 2019, when they were responsible for Royal Caribbean shore tour programs in Spain, which I understand are pretty extensive. This is where he connected with Roberta, who encouraged him to get certified as a sustainable tour operator. Mario is now CEO of Mario Senna International Consulting and consultant for BC Agency and ALSA. So I would like to welcome you, Mario. Thank you very much, Joyce. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice so see um, you. we've been talking about the rain in Florida. You want to tell us just a tad bit about what's happening in Mallorca? Is it nice and sunny today? Very nice. We are having the, one of the nicest Novembers I remember. We have a terrible September, middle October, but a fantastic November. Well, we are all looking forward to traveling again very, very soon. And it sounds like we're, we're getting looking, close to We are, looking for, welcome. We are well, <laughs> looking for welcome any tourists again. Good, good. Well, we'll look forward to that. Um, so we, we now understand a little bit about that you were one of the first tour operators who embraced sustainable tourism. So we'd like to hear from you as to um, you know, what that experience was, was, is and what it was from your side, uh, you know, things that you learned, uh, what it was like and, and why you felt it was a valuable um, step in your business to get sustainable um, certified. So why don't we load your visuals right now? Yeah. And we'll get right into it. I'll try my best. And I want to start thanking uh, you and uh, Roberta for inviting me to participate in, uh, in such a journey. And uh, I would like to frame a bit in Spain what is uh, related to environment and uh, sustainability. There is 123 countries in the world with uh, biosphere reserve zones, with a total of 726 uh, of these zones. Spain is uh, number six out of the 10 uh, most important or most dedicated countries uh, in the world, which uh, eight out of these 10 are European. Mm -hmm. With these 52 declared zones that you can uh, look at into the map, uh, divided in different colors uh, related to different issues, not to be long, but uh, you know, those blue are related to the water, uh, yellow are the islands, light green are uh, mountains and uh, red are uh, Mediterranean areas and uh, dark green borders and finally purple is high mountains. Uh, with these uh, 52 zones uh, uh, puts a position of uh, sixth place in the world for Spain with 12% uh, of the territory in Spain being a biosphere reserve. Uh, which is uh, very important, not only uh, as a land, but as a, um, as a sensitive uh, um, sense of the people. Uh, there is the Pew Research Center with Mecha Research. And uh, uh, the conclusion was that 81% of the Spanish population considers the climate change uh, to be a very serious problem. Uh, actually, only after Greece, South Korea and, and France. So this puts you how sensitive is the Spanish community with uh, with what we are talking about today. Uh, in in the there are not such a, a good news uh, for us living in the tourism because the the most or uh, the most dedicated five areas in Spain 
which are Navarra, Basque Country, Aragon, Asturias, and Castilla, none of them is, uh, is a big tourism destination. So uh, we need to do a lot. Uh, two more data. Only two out of the 13 biggest uh, environment sensitive companies in Spain are related to tourism. Uh, Iberia, the hotel chain, uh, the aircraft company, and Melia Hotels, the big hotel chains. Mm -hmm. But the good news is that uh, back in February, on the 25th, the Spanish government uh, established a permanent delegation for what they call the 2030 Agenda. This is an agenda based only on environment and sustainability, with the typical three pillars, which is social, economical, environmental, and territorial, with the objective to uh, transform the tourism uh, from the, the typical and the most uh, implant uh, big sun and beach uh, tourism to a more, more environmental sensitive uh, tourism. Uh, remember that tourism in Spain represents 11.7 uh, of, uh, of the percentage of the gross national product and creates, creates more than 12% of the jobs. Mm -hmm. Uh, which this is to, to frame a bit on the on on what uh, on Spain in the in the um, in the sustainable world. Next slide, please. Actually, Mar, I just wanted to point. I've spent a fair amount of time in Spain, and I've always noticed that there's a tendency to um, really conserve. That's just second nature. Um, people don't put their lights on in their home unless they're there. Uh, you know, people are very careful about how they use their energy, and and that's I've noticed that for years and years. So it must be in the DNA there. Yeah, it's good. Uh, I I'm not not to be extensive, but I, I I escape one data which is very important, which is Spain is the twelfth biggest country uh, in renewable energy and the fifth in the world and the fifth in wind energy production. Mm -hmm. So this uh, reframes just your words. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were invited by uh, Royal Caribbean to, uh, as Roberta said, with very uh, attractive incentives to certificate our company uh, in the in GSTC, in the sustainability certification. And we decided to follow their paths, choosing travel life. And we went through all the stages, which I will try to explain a bit. Roberta went uh, a bit through, but I will try to get into detail. Uh, you have three steps. The first one is the travel engagement. The travel engagement is the simple one, and it's uh, a company commitment and a company preparation for the first steps to get the final certification. Uh, the most important is that you have to point uh, one internal uh, management coordinator to uh, to again coordinate uh, all the all the process, uh, and it's done online. Uh, the second with the travel part, uh, the travel life uh, partnership, always uh, done online. It's a, con a constant communication uh, with travel life uh, auditors, uh, doing all the in-house uh, data. Uh, getting together with uh, suppliers, providers, uh, and uh, you get uh, what they call a partner status, uh, not get a certification, huh? and uh, you have to uh, <coughs> to work step by step, following their paths and and, uh, and filling in their forms. So when you do the simple things uh, and you uh, get familiar uh, with everything you get into the third and uh, most uh, extensive um, stage, which is the travel uh, life certification. Mm -hmm. In this travel life certification, uh, all above uh, is evaluated by an auditor from travel life, mm -hmm. and you get uh, to register on the travel life platform and complete several forms uh, that, um, deals with various topics related to the sustainability. Uh, you start with the company characteristics, uh, then uh, you uh, proceed to the sustainability management and legal compliance, internal management of social policy and human rights, internal management uh, for environmental things and community relations, and more specifics uh, for the tourism like uh, management for transport with the transport companies communications with accommodations hotels uh, different activities in nature 
uh, with tour leaders, local representatives, uh, and guidelines, and with the destinations uh, themselves. Yeah. In this, uh, yeah. I just wanted to say, um, did you expect this to be such a, a rigorous program? Because I think there might be a lot of people who think to be sustainable, it just means that you have to have clean energy buses or you have to um, you know, prove that you, um, you recycle your uh, waste in your office or something like that. But this is actually very, very extensive. I mean, Roberta talked a bit about that. And you get in, in, uh, in your DNA, as she said, something that uh, part of the things uh, you were already doing already doing them, and some others uh, uh, you didn't. But uh, what is really interesting is that through this uh, certification, uh, like in any other certification, you get a system. Uh, so it's not anymore something that you do because you were used to, no, but there is a system, there is a criteria, there is a pattern that helps you not to lose or not to forget what you have to do uh, to be sustainable. Hmm? Uh, in this third travel life uh, part stage uh, is when you get uh, uh, on-site visit from the travel life auditor, which uh, uh, goes almost through everything uh, from the two uh, stages uh, before. You meeting in your offices, and finally a resolution of uh, an audit report uh, is, uh, is done. Uh, next slide, please. Then is when, when you get this, uh, this certification. And one thing is very important is that the company, uh, Travel Life, encourages not only uh, our company, BC Tours, to get the certification as a company, but also to the people of our office to get per uh, personally certificated. Uh, we did it in, uh, in 2019. And uh, we, we have, and we, um, we were supposed to have in 2022 around uh, 1,000 calls uh, from cruise ships in close to 30 ports in Spain. So we made our numbers and we decided that we need at least four people from our office uh, duly certified uh, to be able to uh, make the, the proper action plan to divide all the regions in four people and to attend to any uh, particularity that we could fail face uh, in the future and in the tours with uh, suppliers and, and customers. Hmm. Uh, so next slide, please. Uh, getting these certifications, of course, we got some, some benefits. Uh, the first one that we didn't expect it was to be, as I showed in the last, uh, in the last slide, to be the first company uh, the, the first tourism company in Spain being sustainable uh, certificated. And this was uh, very good, not only because we were able to renew our contract uh, to get an extension with Royal Celebrity and Azamara, but also it helped, as Roberta mentioned before, to get more extension to other companies uh, to, like Seadream, Ritz Carlton, and, and many others. Mm -hmm. This uh, obtention of the uh, certification gave the company a high visibility in Spain and in the cruise industry uh, because it commit, I mean, you commit in coherence with sustainable, with sustainable big business uh, practices. Mm -hmm. uh, there was another internal very important uh, benefit. Uh, you probably heard, uh, like, I mean, not only in Spain, but there is, a, a, unfortunately, a tendency of anti-mass uh, tourism uh, in many cities in Spain, in many areas in Spain, and not only. And, um, and some of them are very focused on, uh, on hitting the cruise business. You know, the ship is a very big thing in the port where, uh, and it's very easy uh, for a ship with uh, 4,000, 5,000 people to uh, make uh, make she, the ship um, guilty of anything that happens in the city, we are overcrowded because of the of the ship. We are uh, we have too many tourism because of the ship. So this certification help us in front of the local communities and these uh, anti uh, tourism parties to be able at least to explain them how sensitive is the cruise industry with this uh, sustainable world and with the uh, environment. 
So this was a big, very, very big uh, benefit for, uh, for us. Another more, uh, not less important, uh, but not such, uh, in, with such impact, uh, where to knowledge about the, the supply chain and how to detect and manage the impacts of our company's activities, how to use our influence to support our suppliers on the path of sustainability. This is important internally because you cannot get uh, the certifications if you do not uh, involve your uh, biggest uh, partners. Mm. So it's it's very, very important. So, so this was a business builder for you. I mean, and as well as being sustainable, the good news is it also created business for you. And I think this is what we're trying to get this word out sort of into the into the community is that sustainability is good business. It is, absolutely. It, it, it is a good business from the economical point of view, from the image point of view, and from the uh, internal or personal point of view too. Because at the end of this uh, process, which took us uh, a long of time, and it was not uh, it was not easy because part of it was in the middle of the high season of the 2019 high season. So to take out from the people from the operations uh, to do this program was not easy. But we realize and we have a kind of satisfaction because we uh, we saw that many things we were already doing were very sustainable. Not all of them, but many uh, were very sustainable. So uh, it was, as I said before, uh, very good for us to uh, to pattern these things and to structure and to create a system, not to do it ourselves, but whoever comes in the future to the company, just make a uh, follow this uh this certification and these uh, manuals to be sustainable too mm -hmm. next slide please absolutely we had to uh put this in reality so we were uh very excited about creating some new tours uh to uh that were 100 percent compliance uh with the sustainable so uh, two examples of these tours are one in the port of Cartagena, where you sponsor a tree with a company called Bosqueo 2. Uh, so this, this tour consists in uh, reforest uh, critical areas uh, because of uh, fires or because of uh, a change uh, of climate. Uh, and uh, while you uh, get involved in this, you, you also get a master class on flora and fauna. Of course, in summer, you cannot plant the tree yourself. It's not the time. But uh, you sponsor it and you are uh, for two years in communication with a company uh, that updates you on how your tree grows and, um, and gets bigger. Do you get the, pictures of your baby? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. The second one in Valencia, which is close to Cartagena, it's a, a different uh, conception of sustainability. Uh, you go to, a, uh, you go to a, a high sustainable tourism place, which is an hotel. Uh, and a restaurant, and uh, with a bioclimate uh, respectful architecture, cuisine, kitchen, everything, and uh, you get real uh, immersion in the Mediterranean forest and agriculture. And finally, it is followed by a fantastic uh, eco lunch uh, or, uh, done from from the products from the place. Uh, everything, wine, food, uh, everything is done. Next slide, please. And also uh, uh, another benefit uh, uh, for for the company, uh, it's the action plan you are uh, creating uh, to continue with the certifications. Don't uh, don't forget that uh, once you get the certifications, you don't have the certification forever. You have to renew, and this is very important. You have to renew these certifications every every second year so now uh, for us in uh, march 2021 we will have to uh, went through all what the travel life will tell us to go through and and to renew our certification i do not foresee to be such uh, uh, demanding as the first one but it will be for sure uh, a challenge because we are expecting some uh, some uh, and some questions that we didn't get before is how we implemented the system uh, in 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 house. 
uh, this, uh, this action plan, uh, I mean, not to extend uh, myself too much, is based on these uh, seven, uh, uh, seven objectives, uh, waste reduction, water and energy conservation, ecosystem protection, fair labor, visitors management, uh, healthy and safety, and uh, community uh, development. Uh, I mean, let me take just one example. The waste reduction, it's you have to uh, reuse, uh, the uh, use rechargeable batteries or use clothes bags instead of plastics. Uh, training manuals are not longer printed. Uh, you promote coffee mugs rather than paper cups. So these are small actions uh, that all together make big results. So you, you don't find the panacea uh, or big panacea, but you have to create your panacea little by little. Hmm? Next slide, please. Uh, we are absolutely in the company committed to the preservation on the cultural roots where we operate uh, and, uh, and to cause, of course, uh, at least possible environmental impact. And, uh, and we are guided by these following criteria are not all these criteria, but again, some of the criteria we are uh, driven. Uh, our groups are uh, always with a guy that speaks their language and a guy that has been previously involved in the sustainable program for them to know exactly what we are talking about. It's not just to speak perfect English or perfect Italian, but to know uh, or to try to know the profile of the guest uh, uh, that we are having in this type of tours. Uh, we obtain uh, the required permissions uh, for uh, for the different uh, for the different uh, places, uh, and we inform customers uh, too about the laws, the laws, the schedules, and other guidelines to follow to ensure the protection of the goods. Uh, we make small groups for minimizing the the impact uh, of our presence in sensitive areas. Uh, following always uh, the cultural sensitive code of, of conduct. And uh, we support uh, also to uh, local entrepreneurs. Uh, we want as, as the guide suppliers that want to match within this uh, sustainable uh, world and uh, environment sensitive. sensitive. Mm -hmm. uh, we inform customers about the code of the conduct and we take actions when people visit natural environments like work or drive by the outer areas, respect the rules of the place, of course don't throw rubbish on the floor or don't throw cigarette butts, uh, etc. So this is all educational, which is terrific because you know it's not just you go on a tour and you have a nice experience and you forget about it, but you go on a tour and you actually learn something helpful that you can bring back. Actually, uh, yeah, it is and we try also uh, which is risky because when you talk to customer, you don't, uh, you you never know what type of customer you're gonna you're gonna have in front, and you have to be very very sensitive and very very careful not to offend them. But uh, next slide, please. Uh, we have a, a code of conduct for visitors in these sensitive areas, and where clients do not comply with the rules and regulations at the site, and we, all this we let them know before. Uh, the responsible for the place takes the appropriate actions depending on whether the non-compliance is minor, serious or very serious. And we inform uh, the local authorities and the ship, uh, and the ship itself. Uh, the site must communicate to the guide or responsible of the group about the incident. The guide or responsible of the group must inform the ship about the incident. In every case, the incident will be reported and a penalty potentially uh, should not, shall not, but should be conducted by the responsible of the sites and or the ship. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I covered everything. I want to thank you uh, again uh, for your invitation. And uh, I'm ready to try to answer whatever question you or whoever may have. Mario, thank you so much. That was really interesting. And uh, we look forward to to having, you know, more conversations like this in the future. So, um, you know, we're going to bring Roberta back onto uh, the program right now. And we'll start getting into uh, questions and answers. We have a few here. So let's take a look at these. The first one is, um, how have the passengers reacted? you know, to sustainable tours that you offer? I mean, is this a booking driver? Uh, what kind of responses do you get back from the actual passengers? 
So I'll, I'll answer first, and then Mario can be more specific about his. But but I don't think there's enough critical mass yet to have that. I think that a lot of the millennial travelers are looking for this and wanting this. And, and as I mentioned before, I think it's really critical mass and that people will want to uh, obviously get more and more and more involved as there are more and more and more tours and education about it. Um, there are some, I, I will say there are some, but it's not to the point that people are, are demanding that at this point. But the tours that we did have, like the beautiful tours that Mario just showed you, and we have uh, we had other tours from other tour operators. We did a great tour in San Juan at La Perla uh, to help the local community. Um, they're very popular uh, and they sell out, but so is the snorkeling tour. So, so it's really a, a balance. Um, and the idea is to try to create tours that are great for everybody and that everybody will want. But Mario, I don't know if you had a different uh, opinion from your end. Uh, there is several, uh, several comments I would like to add to Roberta's. One is uh, the, the difference uh, within the, the treatment uh, of the client uh, between the, the cruise company and us as tour operator because the first contact is uh, on on board the ship if not before but being such a new program is more on board than than before so uh, the the tour managers the tour escorts are the ones who get uh, the the request and the they need to know exactly uh, what they are gonna um, what they are going to explain. The, the, the passengers or guests that participates on this type of tours, they are uh, um, well-traveled passengers in, in this type of tours. So most probably they know uh, what they want more than what, than what we know, hmm? because they have done it not only in, a, in one country, but in several countries. So we were prepared for that, uh, uh, studying and studying, uh, trying to, uh, answer any potential question for the for the for the for, from the customers. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, and uh, as I said, uh, we got the certification in March 2019, and uh, we uh, tested uh, a bit in 2019 in the season between, let me say, May and September 2019, and we were ready to succeed in 2020. But due to this pandemic uh, we are suffering, uh, we didn't get enough uh, data uh, to know if they are happy, what we have to change, uh, what we have to fine tune for them to, uh, um, to really like these tours. Uh, these tours normally are done with less people than, uh, than the regular tours. And when you take fixed costs like the bus or like the guide and you divide it uh, between 10 people instead of 40 people, the cost is going high. So uh, you need to deliver uh, a very, very good service. Uh, so we will uh, monitor, I hope, uh, in 2021, everything to be ready to improve it for 2022. Well, Mario, you, in a way you led into the next question um, because you, you alluded to the uh, you know, COVID this year and our, our stoppage. Um, and it's, uh, you know, how do you think the disruptions of business fall off in revenue and increased operational costs to provide COVID safe tours will affect the commitment to sustainability? Do you think it will affect it? Um, and how would it? I hope not. I mean, I have no a, a crystal ball, so it's very difficult to answer that. But I hope not, because again, people is more and more addressed to this type of, uh, of world. Uh, I have two children, one is 27, one is 25. I hope mm, not in a very long future to have uh, grandchildren. And I would like my grandchildren to enjoy at least the nice world I have been enjoying. So we are uh, mm, forced to, um, to teach. Uh, the new generations to be more sustainable than what we than what we are, and uh, and in the same on board. I mean, uh, I, I am quite sure, and Roberta will probably agree that we are more prepared uh, ashore and on board than the general uh, or the mass of tourism that there is on the ship. Not those that they really know what they want, 
but 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 the big numbers so we need to teach them we need to do uh, the company in my opinion needs to do a tough work on board the ship explaining the benefits of these new tours mm -hmm. roberta do you want to touch that right up? and it's right it's not just the tours and i i mentioned in the presentation that uh obviously part of the whole wwf agreement was to educate our guests as well as the crew and we do a lot of that on board not just with the tours but just in general with everything that we're talking about with with what our goals are but but it, it will take time and it, and it really is a shame that we had this stoppage because we were on a roll it was a lot of momentum but i do believe and I don't think it's just because I'm optimistic. I do believe that it is going to pick up. And I do think that with COVID, there will be certain restrictions and the tour operators are going to have to comply with the requirements as long as they're they're there. And that'll all have to be kind of factored in to how how these tours will continue. Um, but, I, but I'm sure I'm sure that it will continue. Well, and we have one last question. We have time for one, and that is, um, and this is to either one or both. Uh, were there any surprises during the process uh, towards certification, either for you, Mario, you know, in the process from your side, or you know, Roberta, when you started looking into it, did you run into any surprises, anything that uh, you weren't expecting? So. Maybe. Go, okay, so uh, so for me, uh, like I said, just trying to understand it. The, the wealth of information that we had to digest that we we realized uh, early on that we were gonna have to get very educated. So that was the first thing. And then it was, how are we going to explain this to a worldwide contingent of our tour operators? It seemed really like an insurmountable task. And so so just to try to get beyond that, but, but just one story that I would just like to say as a surprise, because I, I was at the beginning getting a lot of pushback from the tour operator saying, oh my God, you know, you're asking so much, it's a lot of work and we're busy enough as it is. And uh, my friends at Avia Martrino and Octavio Molina, mm -hmm. uh, I remember having a conversation with them very, very, very early on. And they were looking at me like I was like crazy, but they, they were fantastic and they, ended up doing the certification and they are GSTC certified. But, but during the process, when he came into my, uh, into the office last year, uh, when he was at the end, he said, you know what I realized we saved so much money. And I said, really? And he said, we used to take our Jeeps in Cozumel and at the end of every tour, we would wash them all down with water and it cost us a fortune. And I learned through the GSTC process to save my rainwater and I have a cistern and now I do all my washing out of the rainwater and I have saved a fortune. So that was such a beautiful story. And I felt so great because they had come full circle from being, what are you talking about to this is fantastic. So um, those were the surprises that we ended up having these fantastic stories. And, and uh, I know that we're gonna have many, many more. That's great, Roberta. Thank you for sharing that story. Uh, Mari, did you have anything that you wanted to say about that? Yeah, I mean, we have uh, uh, nice uh, little stories too. The first one, uh, and I already mentioned, is that uh, uh, we were very satisfied to realize mm -hmm. that many of the things that uh, we were requested to do, we were already doing them. Mm -hmm. Second is uh, that when we decided in the company that because of the number of calls we were uh, going to serve, we, dis, uh, we decide to have four people. We have a long line of people in the company that they wanted to be uh, named uh, one of those uh, uh, four persons. Uh, another one, uh, which is uh, I, I didn't expect, but and it was very nice. Uh, we are uh, we are very loyal to our suppliers, and uh, uh, we have uh, many many suppliers that want to work with us. In the, in, in the transport uh, fields and in, uh, in the restaurants. So this open uh, to those ones that have been uh, in a way uh, not able to operate with us to do it because they knew and they did it that if they were faster than our uh, regular or traditional suppliers, we, are, we were gonna hire them because we couldn't be sustainable if our supplies they are not. Mm? Uh, and, uh, and last but not least, uh, all this gave me the possibility to be with you both today. Uh, 
and, uh, and to participate in this uh, such a beautiful program. So I want to thank you, Joyce, and Roberta, of course, always, because you always counted on me to participate in, in such good things. That's very nice. Well, seriously, the gratitude is on, on our part over here for your participation today. This has been extremely interesting. Um, and it's, we're delving into an area that we hadn't even touched on before. So uh, we greatly appreciate your insight, uh, your experience, all of it has been, you know, just terrific. So I'm going to thank you both for uh, for your time with us today. And uh, thank you for putting it together, Joyce, is really welcome. great. Thank you. Thank great you. to see you, Mario, as always, but hopefully yeah. in person soon. Yes, yeah. hopefully in person very Be soon. Be safe and take care. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you both. You. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> so thank you all for being with us today. And please be on the lookout for our next program. We are planning one for December. Uh, we haven't announced it quite yet, but we will. And you know, check out sustainableships.com uh, for information, updates on what's going on in the sustainable world in the cruise industry. And like us on um, Facebook, on, on LinkedIn and all, uh, uh, participate in sustainability. And um, for the rest of the, the week and the rest of the month, live sustainably. Thank you.